Hi everyone, welcome to Python Osmosis, episode 17, the screencast that teaches you programming basics using Python. I'm Ryan Che, and in this episode we'll be talking about functional programming tools. So as you start to program more, you'll find that you need to take a list and loop through it and create another list. Or you may need to take and loop through a string and create a, a new variable or something like this. There's a few functional programming tools that we're going to talk about today that can help you do those transforms a little bit more succinctly. Uh, and those are filter, map, and reduce. So let's take a look at how you might go about turning a list into another list. Uh, let's create a function first, definition. We're going to call it f, and you pass an x into this. So we're going to calculate some prime numbers here. Uh, return x mod 2 not equals to 0, so not the, the number x is not evenly divisible by 2, and x mod 3 not equal to 0. Okay, so this will return true if it's not if the number is not divisible by 2 and not divisible by 3. And we could just say, um, let's do 5, true, 6 is false. So filter will take a list and filter it out, as you'd expect, uh, based on a function and turn it into a new list. So we just created that function f. So you pass f into filter. And then let's do the numbers 2 to 25. So this says, give us all, return to us anything that evaluates to true against that function. So filter the range from 2 to 25 with the function f that we created and just give us back the stuff that evaluated to true. What was not divisible by 2 and not divisible by 3. And there you go. This is the same thing as saying uh, primes, creating an empty list primes, and for x in range to 25 if x is not divisible by 2 and not divisible by 3 primes dot append x. And you see we have the same result. It's just that filter was more succinct. We talked about lambda forms before, which were a quick way of creating an anonymous function. Uh, this is actually a really good place to use a lambda form. So if we go back up to where we created, actually let's just scroll up. We created our function f. Um, this is a quick one-liner. So we could take this and do, do the same thing in a lambda form. So filter, instead of specifying the name of a function, we can say lambda, pass lambda x, and this does the exact same thing. Okay, so this, these are often easiest to read from right to left. Starting with, for each item in range 2 to 25, if it passes the filter of the function on the left, and now we can see this right in line. If x is not divisible by 2, not divisible by 3, then it passes, return it. And this does the same thing. The next functional programming tool is map. Instead of evaluating a function for true or false, uh, in this case you can perform a transform on each item within a map. So let's take a look. We'll create a function called cube, and that's actually just going to return x times x times x. It cubes. So now we have that function. Map in the same way you're going to say cube, you pass it the function first and then you pass it your list. Okay, so this is going to 
again, reading from right to left, loop through the range of numbers from 1 to 11, and it's going to perform the cube function on them, which is cubing them. And there's our list. Now, you don't need to just pass one variable. Our cube function here uh, could have been something different, and it could have taken multiple variables. So let's call this um, names. Return uh, x plus space plus y. And let's make a list. First names equals Hank Dagny. Last names equals Reardon Taggart. So if I want to join these two together, I can simply say map and then the function names and now I can pass two different sequences whoops first names last names and we got a list back that joined the first and last names together this is a lot easier than creating a whole for loop and creating a uh, an empty list and, and appending on to that list. Another thing you may want to do is reduce. Rather than turning a list into another list or filtering a list down to a smaller list, you may want to iterate over a list, recurse through a list. So let's take a look at a, an example. So we have the definition add x, y, x plus y. So all this does is add two numbers together. Reduce will iterate over, over a sequence and end up giving you just one result back. So we're going to perform the add function and pass into that range 1, 11. And it returns 55. So again, reading from right to left, it's going to iterate over 1 to 11 uh, and perform the add function. It's going to take the result of that and perform that on, on the next iteration. At the end, you end up with just one single number. That's all for now. This screencast is directly inspired by the official Python tutorial by Guido Van Rossum at python.org.